Oh, he stared at me. He's one of the village, I suppose. One of the neighborhood. I uh, think he lives with his mother a mile or two off. You must expect to be stared at at first, my dear Gertrude. I think the poor lad looked to us in the hope that we might relieve him of his heavy load, rather than from curiosity. Oh, these country lads would carry a hundredweight on their backs. Besides, his pack had more size than weight in it. Another mile and I'll be able to show you our house in the distance. Farmer Lodge didn't bring home his wife this evening, they say. They come as far as Anglebury yesterday. Have anybody seen her? They say she's a tasty little body enough. Years younger than he, they say. How old do you call him, then? 30 or so. <laughs> More like 40. Now then, what the Turks had matter to us about Farmer Lodge's age or Farmer Lodge's new missus? I used to have to pay him nine pound a year for the rent of every one of these milchers. Get on with your work, or it'll be dark before we're done. Tis hard for she. Oh, no. He hadn't spoken to Rhoda Brook for years. You leave Rhoda alone. She has enough to bear without being teased by you. Some do say she's a witch. Jamie! Jamie! Well, did you see her? Yes, quite plain. And is she ladylike? Yes, and more. A lady complete. Is she young? Well, she's grown up, and her ways be quite a woman's. What colour is her hair? Her hair is lightish. Her face? As comely as a live doll. Her eyes are not like mine, then. No, of a bluish turn. And her mouth is very nice and red. How tall is she? I couldn't see. She was sitting down. Then go you to Homestoke Church tomorrow morning. She's sure to be there. Go early, and you come home and tell me if she be taller than I. Very well, Mother. But why can't you go and see for yourself? I go to see her. I wouldn't look up at her if she were to pass my window this instant. And what did your father say or do? Same as usual. Well, took no notice of you. None. boy stared at me again today. The one we passed on the road with a heavy load. I really feel I should do something for him. It is best to keep your distance, not to become too familiar. His gaze was so intense. You have a lot to learn about country people, my dear. But she's very pretty. Very. That'll do. In fact, she's lovely. The air you wired this morning is very tender. But mind nobody catches you. There'll be trouble if they do. You never told me what sort of hand she had. I've never seen them. She never took off her gloves. What was she wearing this morning? A white bonnet and a silver-coloured gown. Mr. Large, he seemed pleased. His waistcoat stuck out and his great golden seals hung like a lord's. Her gown, it, it wooed and whistled so loud when it rubbed against the pews that the lady coloured up more than ever for very shame at the noise. 
She's very shy. I'm not she. However, that'll do. This time you were asleep. What was that noise in your chimney, Mother, last night? What did you hear? You fell off the bed, surely. At what time? Just when the clock struck two. You were nothing more? No. Ah, it's Mrs. Lodge. She said she would come. Think so? When? When? How does she know us? I have seen and spoken to her. I talked to her yesterday. I told you never to speak to anyone in that house or go near the place. It is forbidden. I did not speak to her till she spoke to me and I didn't go near the place. I met her in the road. What did you tell her? Hey, what did you tell her? Nothing. She looked at my boots and said they would not keep my feet dry if it come on wet. I told her I lived with my mother. We had enough to do to keep ourselves, and that's how it was. Then she said she'd bring me some better boots and see my mother. She gives away things to other folks in the Meads. Uh, okay, I have come to the right house, though I was not sure until I caught sight of you. May I come in? I am Gertrude Lodge. You are Rhoda Brook.
Jamie, go to the well and fetch me some water. I hope you don't mind, but I bought your son a pair of boots. Thank you. Poor boy, those he had would surely not hold water. I do the best I can for him. Of course you do. His father. He's not here. If I may, I will call again. You were lucky to have such a son. He is a handsome boy. Goodbye, Rhoda. Goodbye, Mrs. Lodge. Thank you for the boots. Jamie today? He's in the fields, working. I hope the boots fitted him. He spends half his time waxing them. He's very proud of them. And he thanks you. I hope you are now enjoying country life, Mrs. Lodge. Living on a farm has its distractions. But yes, I am enjoying it. Oh, it does get a bit lonely at times. What with my husband away so much. Well, there are the other farms. Rhoda, are you well? You look paler than when I last saw you. My sleep has been disturbed lately. It is nothing. I, I get up early for the dairy, and, and when I'm here, there is much to do. I'm sorry, I, I would have lit a fire. Oh, the cider is warming me. It is unusually cold at this time of year. It is the damp of the water meads. I hope you will not suffer from it. I have never felt so well before. Though now you remind me, there is one small ailment which puzzles me. It is nothing serious. But I cannot make it out. How did it happen? I cannot tell. One night, when I was sound asleep, dreaming I was in some strange place, a pain suddenly shot through my arm there and was so keen as to waken me. I must have struck it in the daytime, I suppose. Though I can't remember doing so. Tell my dear husband, he looks as though he had flown into a rage and struck.